Three, two, there we are. And we're live. Welcome everyone to the wrap up edition of This Week in Hospitality. You said that so quiet that they didn't know what they're watching. <laughs> this Week in I know. They're watching I, This Week in Hospitality Digital we've done Marketing. How many interviews today? This Wednesday. We've done, we've done more than I could count on one hand, therefore the math is beyond me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we wanted to do this last one, uh, but we more of a wrap up just a chance to kind of talk a little bit about how the whole day went and of course Robert you actually lost lost uh, watched the last keynote session I watched the first keynote session I watched and both yes I watched both of those I went to two breakouts and uh, yeah so I actually Accidentally, I'm gonna leave you guys part of the conference. I, you, I, I, better than I do. <laughs> better not tell HSMA. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you guys, then I'll leave it to you to go over and explain a little bit of what uh, what I missed and some of the keynote stuff that I that I know by topic but not by detail. Was there anything that kind of stood out? And you guys go. One thing I will say is watching the keynotes, watching the breakouts. I feel like we're doing a good job of covering what should be talked about. Because evidently HSMAI is covering similar content, and that that feels really good. I feel good yeah. that we're bringing, you know, relevant yeah. stories and content uh, to the industry. Uh, I will say, the whole discussion about agile approach to marketing in the uh, the opening yep. session was really healthy. That needed to be said to a lot of these hotels on how to uh, approach. Innovating while also serving the master of scale, and, you know the fact that organizations are slow to change, much slower than innovation is coming, and how to how to balance that. I thought that was really good. Yeah, and uh, keynote speaker from Chief Martech was, was good. I mean, he really said a lot of things, talking about you know, shiny object syndrome and uh, the massive expansion of digital options, and, uh, said some things that needed to be heard. Yeah, <laughs> from doing the interviews and, and of course being in the behind the camera today and listening to the interviews, uh, technology came up three times. It is a major, like, quit looking for the shiny, quit looking for what you think is new technology when it's just a shiny thing, and take advantage of the technology that's in front of us right now and start using it. Don't keep waiting for the next thing. Yeah. Look at the current thing and use it efficiently. And it really, it came through a couple of interviews you were doing, uh, interview that you did, uh, and it was actually even when I just had, I was speaking with an elf milestone. It's like the technology's there. We should be using the technology. And it's not just for the privileged OTAs or the privileged brands. There is technology out there. Quite honestly, it's it's not even about privilege or capability. It's about the people who take the time to stop and think it through. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that's really what it's about is think through what the journey should be. And that's, that's the subtext of this, is having the, the plan and the strategy and a way to make it measurable. So you can really look at... Is it working? Did it work? I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the six minute sessions that they did, the little flash. Um, mm. How they go? Okay. Um, I only saw a couple. Uh, it went by really quick. <laughs> <laughs> like six minutes long. About six minutes. But yeah. with those, I mean, a lot of them. You know, that's what they're trying to do is say, hey, here are the here are the results, and here's what our expectations. I did see the one from the um, oh the digital marketing um, manager for Marcus Hotels. And she basically said, hey, you know what? Here are some mistakes they made, and here are the things that they couldn't measure. And that was a really important takeaway to make sure that, yes, it was a failure. And we were talking earlier Linda about Gaffrey. failing. Linda Gaffrey? Yeah. 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 Um, or no, 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 somebody works for them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So really look at how do you fail fast. And, and hard, so it's obvious that you failed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. seeing not the failure. Not as an objective, but, but recognizing that and then right. re, you know, redoing it, tuning and, it, and, and making, it, the making whole, it better. The thing I hope with everyone hearing this fail fast is what you should actually walk away with is you're never done. Mm. Like, you never put it away. Marketing's never done. It's a constant uh, give and take and push and pull and fine tuning. And that's how you do it right. Mm -hmm. So when they say fail fast, they don't mean fail fast and quit. They mean continually be working, test, measure, adjust, test, measure, adjust. And that should be a constant. You're never mm -hmm. done. If you put, if you do a major uh, push to do something in marketing, whether it be a new website, whether it be a content piece, any of that, if you believe that there's a beginning in the end and an end, you're not doing it right, and you're not maximizing what you can get from marketing. Right. I think when uh, when you're talking with Kat from Sojourn, which was a dynamo, I loved 
Cat Cat needs yeah. to be on TV. She needs to. She is yeah. freaking rocking. I miss. I, she was I too. Miss her, she was I great. But um, I love what you said. And she was. In, it was like this. This vibe you guys would go back and forth. It's like quit calling it digital marketing. Call it marketing. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's you know, an I thought that was point. an excellent, excellent. Well, point it'll it'll also uh, shorten our URL. Ooh. I don't know. I kind of like the long. Yeah. I can't type it out completely. Those, those are two, two of my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's an excellent point because I think we need to really focus on. It. Except we have hospitality digital market. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I've I've changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because we can't afford <laughs> hospitality marketing. Com. Lauren gone. cannot create another sign. Uh, He's exhausted his budget. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Typos my mostly. But. Uh, <laughs> can we get can we get a name without eyes in it? Because then we know you'll be successful. That's right, because yeah. no, you know, nobody says no one can the see it. Well, because nobody no can, can see it. You it says it. right up front. It says, I mean, it says live broadcast, broadcasting live. And for those who don't know, funny, uh, a uh, long time ago, and never to be forgotten, high tech, uh, I made a sign that said broadcasting live. However, in my haste to get it printed, uh, missed an eye. So it's there's no I in broadcasting. It's broadcasting. <laughs> no we either. It's broadcasting. <laughs> it's broadcasting. Yeah. Well, anyway, we have posted. Hip. I think very prominent in the front. This is yep. broadcasting live, but not a soul has mentioned that they're signing. I'm is... gonna guess that's not because they didn't notice it. I'm just, guessing just it's out of it's out of pity. Yeah, pity or politeness. But I was guys, guys they tried so far. Oh, Good for them. Good for them. Good this, for them. But, but number one is yes, marketing. Yeah. Almost ha it has to be digital. It has to have a digital component. The other one is actually an introduction to the, um, the view from the top panel. It's Dorothy Dowling. Did, they said you know, she was ranked number 17 as CMOs by Forbes, which was great. But then they went out and made the point that she was number three among women. It's like, damn it, that really doesn't matter anymore, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if you're standing on that, the yeah. playoffs are just one of the little ladies. Yeah. Um, you're you're yeah. in big Wrong trouble, folks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's but just, one thing I liked about her is, uh, you know, she talked about an early uh, lesson in her career where it's not just about what you try to do, it's how you get the rubber to hit the road. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people forget that. They forget that, you know, ultimately, your efforts need to lead to revenue. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. yeah you just and the shorter producer. that line is, the more successful you'll be in this industry. Yeah. Yep. So, no, Oh, yeah. no, no, oh, okay, no, no. so here are a few things, pardon me, I'm going to be looking through some of my notes, which were tweeted out uh, so you aggressively. So tweet notes now. I do, tweet yeah, it, it works out pretty well. Isn't that thinking, thinking out loud. Yeah, isn't that terrific? Yeah. <laughs> terrific. I don't, I, my mind only captures like 140 characters at a time yeah. with, with associated hashtags and everything. It's even right. But um, Sean Auckland from Google gave some uh, some pretty good pretty good stats, as, as always. 51% um, of hotel, mobile, and resort um, searches 51% of the fourth quarter of 2016 were for mobile devices. So they finally, finally passed the desktop. Yeah, but listen, this is considered a mobile device. Yeah, well, yes, yeah. if it's so, hooked up, yes. If it's hooked up. If we're being fair, then you should have always counted laptops as a mobile device. No, that's true. I mean, yeah. so like the only thing I'll say is well, maybe the mobile from growth. From mobile phones. growth, and I think we should stop calling it mobile. Yeah. Right. Uh, it should be screen size. Actually, you know what? I believe I said mobile. I think you may have said phones. Yeah, okay. So if it's yeah. phones, I believe that. it may have been phones. Okay. So, so we have erroneous we'll Twitter check. notes. We will check. Yeah. Some of these fact. Where's Holly the fact? Yeah, Holly. Why weren't you looking at the yeah. Roberts we Twitter missed, feed? Um, Holly would have caught that. Like, I mean, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, Ninety-four percent of the people of leisure travelers switch between devices when they're in their shopping processes. And 46% of, of mobile, you know, smartphone users wind up, you know, booking on something else. So it's still very, very much multi-device. multi, multi um, You talked a lot about um, accelerated mobile pages. Um, so AMP, if you see that on, on Google. Um, interesting stat, mobile pages that load one second faster see a 27% increase in conversion rate. I believe it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, and actually, let's not forget, too, Facebook now. Uh, is judging your uh, content yeah. Yeah. on abandonment, like the speed of abandonment on the, uh, the click through. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's not just important on Google, it's important ever. Yeah. Yeah. These mobile yeah. pages are. Should content gets shit results. They, they use one tenth of the data, they I load four times faster. <laughs> um, interesting thing was these, these accelerated mobile pages on average load in about seven tenths of a second. Typical travel website, not just not hospitality, but I would guess they would maybe skew 
slower than airline sites and things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So as travel sites average about six seconds. Yep. So we're talking seven tenths of a second to six seconds. Big, wow. big, big factor. Um, you also made the interesting uh, note that uh, OTAs and metas, which was, oh, unfortunately, auto-corrected to say meats. No. <laughs> oh. OTAs and meats. And OTAs meats. and meats. Yeah. We're talking hard slotting here, folks. Uh, um, now, we've seen that. We're getting him started the, on that thought process. Yeah. He, was, he was saying <laughs> they, hand, they handle. They handle. <laughs> yeah. The hard salami. Handle day. first party <laughs> data about twice as well as like hospitality and travel companies. That they are uh, twice, as, twice as good through yep. their testing, utilization, that these guys are focused on it. This is how they've been winning. Yes. Right, exactly. Um, they do what they do incredibly well. Yep. Um, let's see, machine learning. Oh, um, talked about um, oh PW, PWA, which is the, um, I'm trying to remember what the algorithm stands for. People with apples. Um, yeah, it's a Google thing. Um, what it, basically, uh, basically, athletics. it's it's data driven. Pictures data -driven without athletics. Ooh. Um, yeah. I have to People remember the algorithm. Adam's apples. Uh, B -B -A -A. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But anyway, but we digress. Basically, <laughs> basically, these sorts of you know, like frack pinched well aspirated. I'm not even going to keep us on track. <laughs> we're really going to be, I'm, someone's going to keep us on Somebody's track. Somebody's keeping us on track. Keep us on the track. Yeah. But, um, but really f focusing on these you know, micro conversions of really hitting testing s small subsections of overall conversion, that is, is really driving you know, the programmatic thing. And basically is um, whatever the acronym stands for, and we'll have to, we'll have to come back and do it. We'll, we'll talk get about back with you on the BWA program. BWA at the... The, the bottom line of it it's is... like a 90s rapper. No. The, hmm. PWA. The, the basically, it's, it's machine intelligence-based um, bidding as opposed to rules-based bidding. Personalization with ads? That, I'll, no. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. You guys can stall. I'll do that when I go to a Yeah, we'll it. But anyway, basically, <laughs> basically the, the machine, machine learning-based... You know, programmatic ad buy is replacing rules based in a yeah. major way. Yes. Yeah. Outrageous yeah. And as it curve. should. Right. Because absolutely. rules based is just an oversimplification of how you want to interact with people, anyways. Right. And the question is for the hospitality, and we're not sure how many are really doing that. It's kind of sitting there on the, well, we kind of said, and it is interesting, Sean made the point that using the more programmatic thing, using the machine learning, it is a little bit more set it and let it go because you've got the artificial intelligence driving these decisions, so you don't have to have people. Oh, and then it will get people can, an incredibly high adoption. Yes, it will. It will be yeah. very, very good and do it because that's the problem that you can't throw people at it. You can't be efficient enough at it because you just. You know, well, I have to say though, there's people like Cat that's in the world of programmatic advertising. Yeah. I think we're in pretty good hands because yeah. he has a real good, clear picture on how well and effective PhD and philosophy. Yeah, to get in the door to do what she's doing, but her way of looking at it and the use of, of, of progressive content. web apps. Progressive web apps. Yes. I have a feeling that isn't tightly tied to what you were talking about. No, yeah, no. you want to join us? We're live. live. Would you like oh, to join us, awesome. Kate? Come sure. around, come around. Come around, Kate. We're, reca we're recapping. We're here. recapping the day. I'll let you have my seat. Oh, oh I was so going to get. I'll interview you. Yes. Oh my goodness. Which we, you have we to tell live. us why we would be interested. You because you're, oh, hey. whom, whom are you again? I am the HMAI Student Scholarship recipient. Oh, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank and you. from what university in I you have to support this. Represent New York University. All right. Very NYU proudly. local. NYU local. NYU local. And did yes. you end up doing what I thought you were going to do, which was talk to everybody in the entire universe over the past two days? You know, I talked to a lot of people. Yep. I did a lot of socializing, yes. I was telling you Love that we, networking. we had talked about her in context with the fact that it was so impressive from a student's perspective that when you come to these things, that you're out there to meet and greet everybody. And you're, you're fearless. Good luck. Yeah, because that, that means that, that the industry is getting good, talented people in to go over and do some amazing things, and you're looking at it in the purity of like, I need to know as many people about what they do <laughs> as fast as possible. Exactly. Try to figure out everybody's So jobs. your specialization is marketing? Actually, revenue. Revenue. Oh, okay. Yes. 
That's okay though. We should include marketing. marketing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so question with this. What did you okay. take away from a digital marketing conference from the perspective of walking in the door with a revenue background? In the sense of what your head was filled with revenue, now you're looking at digital marketing. Oh, that's a lot of questions. So I did work in sales and marketing a couple of years ago and kind of, I think just the impact of technology and kind of the ever-changing world and how, I think just kind of how important it's kind of becoming and I think within kind of within the brands and with the loyalty and then also kind of the statistics that I went to one of the presentations by Google and all of their just kind of analytics that just kind of baffled me that they have all these stats and all the things that you look at in the search. They search. know everything. We were just talking about Sean's with, uh, with numerics and so forth yeah. and his uh, badly written Twitter notes. Yes, exactly. And where he was talking about OTAs and meets. <laughs> <laughs> and PWA, and you're right. And PWA, PWA is the progressive web, web thing, so, which okay, is my From your perspective, thing. going into now the industry, new, I've come from revenue management. Yes, I've done sales and marketing. You just went into digital marketing and saw that there's a, this need for collaboration. Do you feel that revenue management should lead marketing? Marketing should lead revenue management? Or is there yet something you're going to define as you get more and more in the industry of this? Com a combination of the two. How do you see these things working? And don't worry if you get the wrong answer, we'll tell you. Oh yeah, no, we'll, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you and then we'll pick on you. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. We'll berate you badly. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right into it. Be, feel free to be honest. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, wrong. That was not a good question. <laughs> no. It was I a leading question. It meant to trap you into a bad answer. No, no, go ahead. I think that there's still space, I think, for both kind of departments to kind of have strong, but I think the collaboration is most important. I don't think that either kind of necessary will lead. I think that it's more that they kind of work together. Another question. Would happening. you make revenue strategy and then go to marketing to affirm your strategy, or would you go to marketing to decide what your strategy should be? That's an unfair question. I know, but it's... It's such an unfair question. <laughs> there is a right and wrong answer. I mean, I think I know what I would say from a revenue perspective. And you'd, but think, I think and you'd a, be correct. Yes. I think from a marketing perspective, they may have a different answer as well. Right, but you'd be right. Yeah, yeah you would be right. Yes. Because ultimately, but, at the end of the day, you're getting the keys to the kingdom to know what the revenue strategy should be. Exactly. And you need to create the definition of it. I, I would say that you need to have a business strategy established. Yes. Uh, the wisdom first. of the ages. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I'm telling you, you know, we're <laughs> way back before there was fire or the wheel, but we used to let people stay in our cave. Yeah. That's right. Uh, cave for a couple of shells. Being. For a couple of shells. Yes. <laughs> no, but that's the real key. And I, I find with my, my client, it's what are you trying to accomplish? You know, what are the, the philosophies in some cases of what does your brand You mean represent? the ever important question of why? Why? <laughs> yeah. so why? So as someone why young coming exist? into this industry, I encourage you every step of the way, every decision, why? ask the question, why? why? Yeah. And when they and you'll be surprised the number of times when they they don't provide a good answer. Yeah, you'll annoy them. Like yes. the other yeah. Other okay. people, well, so, well, somebody told us we had to go do this. We have to, everybody else. Or it's always been it. done that way. Yeah. Well, that's no way yeah. You that's, slap people who say that. Yes. Yeah. But We're challenging that one. Yeah. 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 But, 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 turn, but, but if they come back with a great answer because, why are we doing this? Because it's increasing our conversion. It's, it's lowering our acquisition cost. It's doing whatever. It's, it's you know, giving us a higher net promoter score, some form of metric that's yeah. tied back to a business strategy that then can get executed through revenue management, marketing strength, that's good. Mm -hmm. And it may not be everything all through, but, but little glimmers of hope of, of linking those, they're, they're on the right Plus path. it's also good in the meetings that if you ever want to put somebody off balance, ask them why. It'll always keep them off balance because then they figure they, they, they anytime you're in the room, they better have a good answer to the question before you even ask it, which is always a good thing. But And if you ask why and it doesn't eventually lead to, to sell more rooms at a higher rate, then you know that the strategy is off. Yeah. Because everything should lead to yeah, selling well, more runs and, and a great example all yeah. sorts of people watch Shark Tank right one of the major questions that they come up where people blow it is on the why yeah. it's just like wait why are you better than your competition why do you have some sort of vote built around your technology or intellectual you? property that other people just can't knock the why why do you need this money you know things like that what, you know those are the big real questions that more unfair questions who's the most impressive person you can speak to that 
aside from Lauren and Ed. Which we right didn't speak, here, so we're, we're, no, no, we're speaking safe. right now. Okay. I mean, that, 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 that's, right. that's the a obvious given. answer. Well, given the current question. company, just skip out the current question. I'm just those going to grab my bag and not have a question. You wish that Lauren stood up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. We can swap seats. It's all good now. No. <laughs> We've tag team. Tag team. Is that the SEO certain. social yes. panel? I, I missed that. I wanted to see that. It was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I also loved Brinkford at the very beginning. I thought it was kind of mm -hmm. a great introduction kind of to get you started with the day. Yeah. We were just, actually, you were the one that commented the most about that, about the disparity between the technologies and, and business adopting them. So yeah. Far. And that it has actually, in the interviews that we've done today, uh, technology has been a kind of resounding theme of using the technology that's present. So it's, yeah. I think it was a great presentation. Too. Part of the reason for that, that probably happened is because this is the digital marketing <laughs> conference. Maybe. Not the carrier pigeon conference. <laughs> I have a feeling we would have been hearing a lot about, about carrier, carrier pigeons. But, but then as you pointed out in one of the previous interviews, it, let's stop calling it digital marketing and let's stop referring to it as Fair marketing. enough. Right. But unfortunately, a lot of times the things I think don't happen. And I maybe fortunately a lot of times that's the <laughs> Just the idea for the carrier pigeon conference. I think that's a that's carrier old pigeon school. conference. Oh, that is an old school anybody that watches the show that's interested in talking to you for whatever reason, okay. how do you want them to contact you? Do you, do you have a, uh, a LinkedIn safe or email? LinkedIn, whatever way you want them to find you, that's nice and safe and whatever, that, that you want them to reach out to you, whether it be for job opportunity, questions from anything awesome. you were here, whatever. So yes, this is the chance to tell how to get involved. Okay, so my email is kate.blumenthal at nyu.edu. Or LinkedIn is Kate Awesome. And, and speaking on Kate's behalf, Kate is interested in high compensation, low responsibility <laughs> positions. As is, is really Lauren, <laughs> Robert, and Ed. <laughs> She's really, really interested in that aspect of the industry. And, and actually, really I think this is an important question. <laughs> what is your dream job? Yes. Oh. For right now or for nope. the future? Just, yeah, whatever. Right What's your dream job? I really want to go into hotel development, kind of in the long term. I really want to own and develop hotels. Okay. Kind of that is a great answer. Brand. That's a good answer. Yep, that's, that's an excellent answer. And thank you for letting us snag you as you walk by. <laughs> and just remember all of us when you own and develop hotels. Yes. I will. Yes. We got a little long way. The goal is to understand how hotel runs. We long tail market. You're what we call top of top of top of all. <laughs> and, and don't remember them because they're going to be asking for top rooms. I don't do that. They do <laughs> them. So just you don't? You don't? I don't. Well, oh no, somebody's... you're going to make me break one of my rules of mentioning a former life. Oh, okay. oh. One of yeah, your rules? Yeah, I believe right, it was. I'm thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was so nice to meet you. <laughs> it was thank wonderful to meet you as well. Thank you. Yes, oh, thanks for jumping on the show with us. So where can I find the show? Um, HospitalityDigitalMarketing.com Awesome. Okay. <laughs> you've got to nice somehow to figure out how to get the digital out of there. We've just yeah, discussed. we were just talking about changing the URLs as we spoke. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good to know. 301 redirects. Thank you for joining us. Like Perfect. My pleasure. No, none of the smaller ones are available anymore, but oops. Thanks, Kate. Thank My you pleasure. very much. Enjoy the rest. All right. Uh, okay. What else did we Let do to the wrap-up? Yes. yes, get back to the wrap-up. All right, so what we did learn web apps was, was you was were totally talking wrong. about something that yeah. has nothing to do with what you thought it I had got to hung do. Up, I got hung up on actually, I'll blame it on Sean's presentation where he did say for, you know, PWA earlier, but then he didn't really cover it because of time he skipped over it. So, yeah. Sean, if you did. So you're blaming person. Sean? I think I should blame Sean. Yeah. All right, yeah, so we got clear on that. Google, yeah. Google, so, blame Google. Okay. Yeah. Basically what um, progressive webs, web mm -hmm. Web apps are, are which Sean didn't cover, <laughs> but I might as well clarify it now. Are apps which load very, very rapidly, and it's basically web-based, where you don't need to have an app store to download. Right. So apps. if you remember, on many of our conversations, I've talked at length on how I do not believe hotels should have mobile apps. apps. Yes. Instead, they should have web apps. Right. Uh, now we're finding out they should be progressive. Yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, so Google now has a now has a product that does that. For people just like the, the accelerated web pages, Google is helping, you know, it's kind of the Peace Corps type thing, which does have some revenue implications for them, but um, sure helping does. people help themselves they pay the to bills. basically yes, yeah. help they, their, they, they public trade and they their market cap. Yeah. Lauren, did you see anything? 
in the event? Uh, not really. Did you have lunch? I did. How did they, you like the lunch? Out of here. Lunch was amazing. Actually, no, I grabbed a few sandwiches. We're all good. I, I my, my experience with this conference for the first time in 15 years was based on the people that we talked to and the, the feedback we got from the outside. It's, it's kind of funny. The, some things were consistent, and a lot of things were just alternate perspective based on why they showed up. I mean, just there were people that wanted to hear smarter people, and there was people that wanted to give me a firm what they thought they were smart on. Yeah. And it's neat in that sense because then it's not under the filter of me having heard the same thing. I'm mean, only hearing it from them. Right. So in that sense, yes, it was it was it was interesting to get it from the eyes of another person this time around. I, I would say that this was a worthwhile uh, event. I, I think that if you're in revenue management, sales, mm -hmm. or marketing, this should be an event that you consider. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you should plan on spending the day, not just coming in and seeing one meeting. Right. Yes. Um, this is one of my favorite events that HSMAI does. And again, I think we mentioned earlier, you know, it's interesting there is access to great media. Ted Tang, who's the CEO of the hotels of the world, was here. You know, yeah. Dorothy Dowling, EDP from, from Best Western. The yeah. networking is phenomenal. Really Robert people. Cole. Robert Cole was here. Wow. Previously of Four Seasons mm -hmm. from Cornell. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Wow. Bingo. He <laughs> <laughs> was killing you that you couldn't say it. Wait, 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 one other thing we haven't done is if you want to find any of this content, you must go to timpeter.com. Yes. Forward slash, slash. HSMEI Digital Marketing Conference, hospital.digitalmarketing.com forward slash something else. Yep. Yes. yes. Uh, more more recap, though, because I see Cindy has the screen, a Cornell graduate. Oh, from, oh, oh, over there. there. Be more um, bingo. One of one of us has some, some great stats from delivery of going through, um, I think, 25,000 hotels, 5 billion data points, um, basically helping to educate the hospitality industry on net revenue and considering acquisition costs and all the sorts of costs they're doing. And good, I baited Cindy to come over to our oh, online hey, site. Cindy. We're live. And we're we're live. live. I, can, I have to find someone. That's and okay. I'm late coming back from my meeting and no. I'm like, so you're excited okay. to join us. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I will throw out a few of Cindy's stats. Please do, over here. That's fine. No worries. No worries. So Absolutely. A couple of in, what I thought were very interesting statistics was that the, the revenue capture of hotels um, had actually dropped half a percent, which um, Cindy related for the industry is about $729 million. This is kind of like oh, what gets... What gets lost in the gap of when intermediaries are processing um, these sorts of transactions as opposed to, to having them go direct. So mm -hmm. um, there's certainly been a lot of initiatives to go direct bookings and things like that from the hotel. Obviously the numbers um, bear that out, but it's not necessarily playing out across the, the broad industry at this point. Right. Um, another interesting one was that between 2014 and 2016, um, OTA booking share um, increased 28%, which is a pretty That's a big, ass, increase. big ass number. Um, brand growth was, uh, oh, I'm sorry, brand expense growth. I, okay, let me just read. OTA expenditures, not just booking growth, but the expenditures on OTAs, terms of missions, things like that, grew at 28%. Brand expenditures at 20%. In the meantime, Property direct sort of thing dropped like 15. So it just numbers headed kind of the wrong going the wrong way, wow. people. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Not not real real good. So yeah, brand loyalty spend was up 20. Oh, on revenue total revenue paid, guest revenue paid, paid revenue was up 14 percent. Again, this is 2014 to 2016. OTA spend growth was 28 percent. Brand loyalty spend was up 23 percent. So all those ramping up much, much more aggressively in terms of the expenditures yes. than, than the actual paid revenue growth, which is a problem structurally for the yeah. for the industry. So the, the tide is not necessarily being spent, at least based on, on Cindy's numbers of 25,000 hotels and a lot, of, a lot of data points. Yeah, so, interesting. Yeah. All right, what else did you see? Um, what else do we have here? Um, let's see. Tip, remove the cost of acquisition and oh. sales and marketing expenses to yep. understand the true revenue contribution. Yeah, so, oh yeah, Cindy Cindy had three, I think three tips, three or four tips, three tips. Um, benchmark against the best hotel, the best your hotel can achieve. 
because not all hotels are created equal, and you've really got to look at the size of the market. And benchmark, here's kind of what your, your potential is, so you don't get caught up in a situation where your market's turning down and you're going against some sort of industry average, which is just mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, number two, weight your competitors by segment and weak part. Again, so it's not just let's look at these guys overall, you really need to know what's happening on weekends versus weekdays, or however your market may be breaking down, because again, if you're a resort, it may be very different from the work of that sort of thing, and even if you're a particular type of hotel, um, the weak parts may be completely, completely reversed. Right. Um, and then basically, look, um, the third tip was remove the cost of acquisition and sales and marketing expenses to understand the true revenue contribution. I think that's the most valuable suggestion because you really, what are your brand marketing costs? What what are the cost of acquisitions? Everything, you've got to consider that. So when you say, hey, look at our ROI, which again, love some of the marketing groups here and things like that, but a lot of those ROIs are based on this top line rep talk and it's not taking into consideration all of these costs that are associated through the channel. This is actually what I'm hoping to see a bigger focus come. Now that everyone's worried about a slowdown, Hopefully, the bottom line becomes the conversation. Right. Yeah. Um, as someone who invests in lots of things, I shy away from companies that only talk about top line. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and or that their top line growth That's and their bottom line money, growth are money left to invest. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, are attached to each other. Yeah. You know, uh, I'd rather see a company stagnate in top line but double. Right. Bottom line. Yep. Efficiencies. Do more with less. It's amazing. It's the way you right. get rich. Yep. Uh, I mean, well, so many companies historically have failed because they focused only on the income and not in the. Well, oh, they they fool themselves yeah. by saying, "Well, scale." Yeah. Right. We'll become profitable at scale. Right. No, you won't. No. Yep. If you're unprofitable now, you're unprofitable at and, scale. Mm -hmm. And one of the red flags when you start looking at the hotel earnings you know, yep. reports for, uh, well, how did things work? Well, well, we aren't really sure of the results, but we got nine million more loyalty members or something kind of like. Okay, not really a discussion of what they produced or how that generated incremental revenues they weren't getting like, before or anything, and that's that's a little bit scary. It is. It is. So, you know, I, those are good insights. Um, we, we continue to have good traffic coming by. Yeah. Um, openness, I think, was great in this show. I think we should probably get out of the weeds in our recap. So. It is a quick recap. That's true. Oh, wait. That's no. We're already past quick recap. Yeah, I was say, we're, exactly. we're not in a quick recap mode. We're in a recap mode. All right, recaps. Robert, real quick. What was your favorite part of the day? My favorite part of the day, um, I would say, across all of the different conversations, the, the recurring theme of looking at the bottom line revenue impact yes. and really evaluating acquisition costs, distribution costs, considering all of those, those factors into it. And then, Identifying the tools and channels that will give you the best returns uh, yeah, by taking that approach. Lauren? I would say that things seem to be slowing down in the what's next questioning and Thank more goodness. into the How what should we be doing now. Yep. And and there seems to be this, hey, look, there's pretty flowers and bees and trees and stuff like that. That the, Instead of that race, people are gearing, gearing up for the fact of the what's happening mode. And because of that, they're like, shoring up and considering options now as to what's currently available rather than they you know like the music's about to stop so let's start looking for the chair because you know it will stop if we do need a chair and and i think that that seemed to be in the general conversations you know using the current technologies being aware of the current solutions that are in place looking at current providers that are in place looking at current uh, analytics that are in place or not in place that you should be getting in place uh that seems to be the more consistent conversations i've heard in, in general dialogue so that was probably the biggest thing I noticed out of this conference so far. Yeah, how about you get? You know, I, I like, I, I still think the first session, uh, not just because it was when I had the most coffee in me, <laughs> uh, the, the lesson on project management approach yeah. uh, was yeah. really good for Going this to audience to hear. Water, I think that's the first time at any hotel conference, perhaps. Maybe outside of HTNG. Okay? Right, right. <laughs> HTNG or, um, yeah, the Open Travel Alliance. Where they discuss waterfall versus agile approach to the only thing, the only thing I'm, you know, I really wish they would have done with that is actually spoken about the fact that it makes sense because it's project management, mm -hmm. yeah. and you can approach any form of project management, P 
piece with the fundamentals of how to manage complex projects. Right. Break um, it down. Put yeah, break it down. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that might be an interesting thing. I'll, I'll make a prediction right now based on that comment. Because I think that Ed came up with some insight again. Right? We're, we always like to reward wow. him when that happens. Man. How many hours did it take for us this time? Come on. No. <laughs> no, uh, my, Seven? When we were talking, we were growing K. Yeah, you know, the siloing of, of revenue management, that sort of thing. Um, my prediction is going to be that there's going to be some sort of project management functionality that is going to be introduced in the hotel industry to try to bridge these silos where you need to get somebody, I don't know if it's reporting to the chief revenue officer or or something in that case where you go, no, here's how it's going to work together. You're doing this and here, these are the inputs you're going to get. These are the outputs you're going to get. Here's the time schedule. Here's the budget. All those various aspects of project management to make sure that this can move through yep. smoothly. And then all of a sudden when the campaigns are measured and that sort of thing, you start going, yes, we've got the results and it's not, damn it, group B didn't do their part and dropped right. out, and we're, we don't know what the ROI is, because right. somebody else, it's those guys screwed up. Yeah. So, them, so. so still that to me resonated as yeah. probably the most valuable thing for this audience to hear today. Yeah. I didn't have the heart to talk about the fact that most development has moved past agile, <laughs> uh, but you know, hey, baby steps. The, the, right. the gap between business application versus the technology growth, you right. can be applied on many things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All the development moves to machine learning, and the machines are going to be doing that anyway. Yeah, yeah. they already done learned it. They already done learned it. <laughs> yep. They can spell signs better than us and everything. Great. Right. Um, all right. So with so that, with that, we're good. Now we will have a show this Friday. Uh, whether there's more things to glean from all this or bad or bad tweaks to recount, uh, I won't be. Here. I won't be involved. That's all right. Tim, Tim's also on the mouth, so oh, we'll figure it all out for it. Go. Oh, sure. it's going to be weird. It's always weird when it's just me. Alone. Yeah, we get, we get into some deep, deep it just uh, gets rabbit holes that's, for it. But, that's uh, that's what the viewers funny. say as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they um, do. <laughs> Yep. So, so tune out this week. Yeah, because it's gonna get it's gonna get strange. It's gonna get weird. Just dead and I are gonna be talking. Uh, but for all of these shows, you, you have it, uh, hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com. Obviously, right now it's only on Facebook Live. It's shared over at hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com, Facebook Live. Uh, Flipton's been honest. Uh, great. We'll have to go over and take a lot of this content. We're gonna filter it out. Put it We're in, trying to clean it up. Make it sound good. Make us look smart. We'll, we'll also do a blooper reel because it's one of our favorite things oh, to do when good we stuff edit to do. video. He's going to uh, get this down to about two minutes of usable content. Yeah, yeah right? really, really good content. The rest is going to be Two dialogue. minutes of usable content, about three hours of blooper reels. Three hours exactly. of blooper reels. That's, that's a good ratio good. for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. improved our bench. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It used but, to be one minute of usable content to six hours of blooper reels, so now we're doing better. So, yeah. Robert, if people want to learn more about you or contact you, how can they do that? At Robert K. Cole or rockcheetah.com. Pretty effective way. You can find what I care about at flip.to or you can find me on social media as Edward St. Orange. And Lauren. At hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com or Lauren at Lauren at hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com. <laughs> With that, thank you everyone for taking the time to watch us on live and for those who watch us on the recording. We hope we gave you some fun things to think about. And if you weren't here this year, we hope to see you next year. And so, if you want to remember, of HSMAI, we want you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Should we bring on the YCA? Like the thing? Uncle Sam style. Yes, yeah. Only, uh, I was going to go YMCA. Uh, only but. you can help prevent hospitality <laughs> industry ignorance. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Y'all have a great time. Thank you so much for joining us on the live show. <laughs>